For today's episode of the Wool Needles Hands podcast, I'll be giving you an update on my Something Old, Something New projects for the Something Old, Something New make-along that we're hosting here at the Wool Needles Hands YouTube channel. I'll also be catching you up on a project I started this weekend, and I thought that I would give you a little sneak peek behind the scenes of this space that you see here so that I can share it with you. And then I also have a reveal of something that was just delivered to me that I've been really excited to share with you. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, grab a cup of something cozy and let's get started. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. My name is Taylor and I will be your host. This is a channel dedicated to my passion and love for the craft of knitting. And this is a podcast where I share with you the progress I'm making on my knitting projects. And occasionally I share with you other crafty endeavors I've been getting up to. I'm coming to you from Henderson, Nevada, which is a town outside of Las Vegas, Nevada in the Southwest United States. This is where I'm from and where I live with my husband, Brandon. My my sons Angus and Ronan, my dog Pepper, and my cat Oscar. It has been an exciting weekend, very crafty, very um, kind of really getting in touch with my spring cleaning vibes, even though spring is almost over. And I want to share some of that with you guys today. I also have some progress that I've made on my Something Old, Something New submissions for this Something Old, Something New make along. I will pop a little card up at the top of the screen here for the podcast episode where I give you the background and the introduction to this make along should you decide to get started because it does end and culminate June 7th to be exact. So you can go ahead and learn more about that by heading over to that video. But yeah, I want to share with you that progress. And I also wanted to give you guys a much needed update on the blanket that I just completed for my friend who had a baby back in April. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a tour um, inside this space here that I think you might get a kick out of. I'm really proud of what I want to share with you guys today. But let's dive in. And the first thing I want to share with you is a quick update on the baby blanket that I finished for my good friend who had a baby in April. I shared this blanket on the last episode of the podcast. I had tassels attached to the blanket to cover up a snafu at the end of my work because I had run out of yarn, a whole thing. And if you would like to hear me talk more about that, you can head over to the last episode of the podcast and listen to me go on about that because it was kind of a thing and I needed your advice. Well, you guys, you came out and really provided me with really great advice. Some of you thought that I should keep the tassels. Some of you thought that I should ditch the tassels. Actually, it was far more in favor of ditching the tassels which after I thought about it and you know the purpose of this blanket, I really wanted it to be done properly. And I really think that after I really considered everything, the tassels just kind of felt like an afterthought um, and kind of like a band-aid for a problem I really could have just remedied quite easily, to be honest. So I wanted to share with you that blanket. It is here, it is finished. It has been, I'm gonna move this chair back because I keep bumping into it. It has been washed and blocked and I love it. Now it's here and there are no tassels. It has been finished properly. So you can see no tassels here, just, just a regular blanket. This is the winter cuddler by Je Jessica Potas, who is mama in a stitch. You guys, it's finished and it's gorgeous. It feels like maybe it's still a teeny bit damp. It has that wet wool smell, just a smidge, but I love this. Okay. So what happened last time is I, um, finished, I was, I got to a section, well, I got to the border of the blanket and I wasn't able to continue the border to the full width before running out of yarn. And I went back and forth about what exactly I should do. Should I buy another ball of yarn, which turns out Michael's doesn't even carry this yarn anymore. So that wasn't even going to be an option for me. Um, and then I thought about the tassels and all of that. Well, then I was thinking, why don't I just, why don't I just rip back to give myself enough yarn and then bind off proper and the border will be a little bit more narrow on one end. And I thought about doing that, but then it dawned on me. So if you look right here, right before I get to this border, right here, there's this textured section. And it looks like it kind of works, right? That's a very logical transition. You have this texture right here and then you have the border right here. Well, last time I had been doing this, there was a little section of stockinette stitch between this textured section and this border section. And it really didn't need to be there. 
And I think that the reason, so I think the reason I ran out of yarn is because one of the repeats in this blanket, cause it's kind of like a sampler of different stitches. And let's just not look at this little section right here that yeah, there's a mistake right here, but it's fine. Um, but because there's all this different texture, uh, it, it's kind of, what am I trying to tell you? Oh, the reason I think I ran out of yarn is because I think I did one of these little like textured repeat sections more than once, or I added a section in here. I don't really know, but that is what explains to me like why I ran out of yarn. So what I decided to do was up here at the top where I said there was like this little band of stockinette stitch in between this section and this section, I just took it out. I, I ripped all the way back past that band of stockinette I figured I was just gonna take that out and then work up the border to the full width that is laid out in the pattern, a full, um, I think it's like 14 rounds or whatever, or 14 rows, and be done with it. And honestly, it worked out beautifully. You wouldn't know by looking at this that I left anything out. It's absolutely gorgeous. I really love it. So here is the finished Winter Cuddler by Jessica Potaz, tassel-free, tassel-free, hassle-free. Look at that, you guys. I think I need to make that like a thing. If, if it's tassel free, it's hassle free, especially in the case of this, because part of the issue was the tassels I had put on here. Oh, God, the more I think about it, the more I think like, what was I thinking? The tassels were of a yarn that was not washable, whereas this entire blanket is washable. It has been washed and dried in my washer and dryer, and it's a beautiful thing. Um, but the tassels wouldn't have been able to withstand that, not multiple times, maybe not even once. So it was just a whole thing. It was a whole problem. So I'm so happy that they are gone. It is a tassel-free, hassle-free blanket for my dear friend who will be using this in kind of like her baby room as a little, as a cozy blanket to hang over the rocking chair. And then maybe as the baby gets a little older, the baby can lay on it for tummy time or whatever. Um, yeah, loving that it's finished. I so appreciate all of your advice and kind words. You guys are just, when you give me your advice, I just, it warms my heart because so many of you are just so kind and it, I just feel like I'm taking advice from a dear friend and that really means a lot to me. So thank you so much. That is finished and it's, it's fabulous. So I think she's absolutely going to love it. And I know I said I was going to give it to her for like um, Monday after Mother's Day, but I really wanted to get it done correctly and not rush it to her. And actually they left on a vacation, so it works out perfectly. So when they get back from their vacation, that blanket will be hers. Okay, let's do a quick update on my something old, something new submissions. Now I am working on the Eileen bag as one of my submissions, something old, something new. We are knitting non-garment related items or crocheting, because that is absolutely welcome as well. Actually, because this podcast is just kind of like a make along, you could spin, you could sew, you could weave, whatever. But I am right now knitting an Eileen bag. The something old in this bag is some yarn that I purchased from a secondhand kind of thrift craft store on Etsy. This is like 40 year old, 50 year old yarn. Um, yeah, there it is. And that's one of the old things. Now just know when I say old, I don't mean like 50, a 50 year old person is old. Cause I know that that can come off and sound like, oh, well, 50 years old is old. That's not what I mean. I just mean like, this is not new yarn. I didn't go out and buy it. You know, it's older than myself. Um, so just, just in case, you know, I don't know. But then I also have some yarn that I harvested from a thrifted sweater that I'm using in this as well. And the something new is going to be my Eileen bag that I have here. So this is just a knit market bag. It's kind of hard to show the market bag aspect of this at this point, but here it is. You can see that it has a nice rectangular bottom here, a really nice mesh fabric. I love the way those two yarns are coming together to get this really pretty marled almost like a newsprint look. It's really lovely. So here I am. This is my progress on my Eileen bag. I um, I really love this pattern. There we are. <laughs> I really love this pattern. I love watching it come together. I will say though, pairing these two yarns together, um, and I even increased, I went up a needle size for this to a size seven to accommodate what I think would be a larger overall gauge of yarn. But working these stitches with these two strands of yarn held together, um, it can get like really, 
it's kind of like, I don't know, it's not like it hurts my fingers or anything like that, but you really kind of have to work it. And when I'm all done, I do have like little marks on my fingers from where I was holding my needles. So it, it's something that I, I pick up, I do like five or six rounds and then I put it down for a little bit, but it works up relatively quickly. The pattern here grows vertically, like grows in length pretty quickly. I feel like, um, because you have that big like mesh fabric there, it doesn't take many rounds to show noticeable progress. So it's satisfying. I'm enjoying this. Um, also, I am keeping this in a bag that is far too big for it, to be honest. But this is a um, project bag by Magner um, Company out of Atlanta, Georgia. All the project bags that you see me use here, I will link down below in the description box with um, this one being an exception. This is a project bag by Fringe Supply Company, which is no longer in business, but there are lots of project bags similar to this on Etsy. But if you ever see me talk about something and it has a project bag that goes along with it and I don't mention the project bag, it will be linked down in the description box. Okay, this is my tote bag replacement for my grandma's um, old antique sewing tote. Now this is again, this, if you want to know more about what I'm talking about here, um, you can go back a podcast episode or two, and I'll share that with you in those episodes. But just real quick, I am replacing the bag portion of my grandma's old sewing tote, which is roughly 90 years old. The bag part of it was starting to fall apart. And I don't know if you can see, okay. So for right now I am hold, I'm keeping that bag, I'm trying to see where it is there. I'm keeping it over here on the wall. I have it hanging on a nail that didn't have anything hanging on it, like right over here for now. I have it framed and I've received lots of suggestions about how to frame that and what to do with that to preserve it. This is kind of like what I'm doing right now and I'm still mulling around what to do, but it's nice to have that preserved and honored up on the wall in my craft office space here. So that's where that is. But this is going to be the replacement for the handles from that bag, hold on. So here is one of the handles from that bag. This is my something old, again, like 90 years old or so. And the something new is going to be the bag that I'm knitting for this. Now I'm improvising this, I'm not using any pattern. I'm just kind of following, you know, the lines and measurements from the old bag. And this is really all I have up to this point. I'm working on the flaps that are going to feed, excuse me, that are going to feed through this handle and be tacked down so that the bag can be opened up easily. So the bag is gonna require flaps because the handles are rigid. Um, so it needs flaps to be able to open like this. I'm knitting these flaps, which is this right here. It's easier to see that it's a flap if I hold it up here. Long enough so that I can fold it, send it through the hole on the handle or the slit on the handle and then tack it down like this. I am hoping to kind of have this part finished soon. We are taking a trip out of town next weekend and I would like to have at least one handle attached to this so I know how to do it. I have an idea of how to do it so I can work the other one up as well. So I'm hoping to have that done. I don't know, I wanna say by midweek next week. So it'll look kind of like this. Yeah. Okay. Loving that. Absolutely loving this. I am using True Boo, which is 100% bamboo by Lion Brand, and I am pairing it. And that True Boo is what these individual colors are. So I am using one, two, three, four, five, five colors, True Boo by Lion Brand. And I'm pairing them, marling them, holding them together with this yarn, which is that same yarn I harvested from a sweater and I'm using in my Eileen bag. I love the way the fabric looks with those yarns marled together. It's just really pretty. So that's the progress I've made on that. I'll be honest with you. I thought that I was going to make a lot more progress on this, but I kind of my um, knitting, not my mojo. It was just more like my, my momentum. I had things come up over the last two weeks and I thought that I was going to get a bunch more done than I was able to for various different reasons, you know, whatever life stuff kids in hockey. My good. But anyway, that's the progress I've made. I'm confident I will have both of those finished 
for the June 7th deadline. Now, enough about me. I want to share with you guys some of the work that other folks are doing in the Something Old, Something New make along here at the Wool Needles Hands community. So without further ado, here's a quick look at all of that beautiful goodness coming out of the make along. <laughs> Love, love, love. I am so inspired by all of the different things you're doing. The t-shirt yarn, I see so many people making t-shirt yarn, um, both for this make along, but also just I see it happening on Instagram and whatever. And I think it's so cool. I actually, my brother who no longer lives in Las Vegas, he now lives in Dallas with his family, um, in his bedroom, which is now my boy's like bedroom away from home, whatever, you don't need to know all this. But there is a uh, dresser and the bottom drawer of that dresser still has like a ton of his old t-shirts from like when he was in high school. And I know he's not gonna wear them. And of course I will ask his permission, but they're all these like crazy wacky colors cause they're like band t-shirts and surf t-shirts and whatever. And I was thinking like, that's where I should go. And I don't know, commandeer his t-shirts so I can shred them up and turn them into t-shirt yarn. I will ask him, I will ask his permission. I should just text him now and say, hey, can I turn your t-shirts into t-shirt yarn? All right, a couple of weeks ago, I made a video called Etsy Finds for Knitters or really great Etsy Finds for Knitters. And I shared with you some of my favorite finds, little doodads, gadgets, and notions for knitters and fiber artists in general. And one of the things, or one of the sets of things that I gushed over and absolutely fell in love with were ceramic bird buttons by Stockwell Ceramics in the UK. So I had mentioned in that video I wasn't gonna purchase them, but I purchased them because I absolutely couldn't resist. And you guys, they are in this box. That is how tiny they are and how adorable I'm sure they are. And I want to open this and share them with you. So here we go. Oh my gosh, a tiny box with little buttons and look at this tiny business card. Now, just so you know, I paid with these for my I paid for these with my own money. This was not sent to me, and I don't even know if Stockwell Ceramics knows that I've been gushing over their buttons, but they're absolutely gorgeous. How cool is this business card? It's really tiny and adorable. And inside this box are these buttons. Gosh, they're in this little bag. That's the back side of the buttons. Now, the reason I wanted to just go ahead and get these was because I wanted to have them ready to go for the time that I knit my first cardigan because I want that cardigan to be a real kind of, I don't know, just a real, not a statement piece. I want it to be something I can wear, a classic staple piece, but I also want it to have what I like referred to as heirloom essence. You can actually um, get that on a t-shirt, guys. Real quick plug, people seem to like it. So we put it on a t-shirt here at Wool Needles Hands. Heirloom essence. Go watch that Etsy finds video and you'll see what I mean. But these buttons will be my little heirloom essence for a future hand knit cardigan. And I'm really excited about that because they are just gorgeous okay there are two four six eight of them and here they are we have this bird i don't really know what this is oh my gosh and then the it's almost like a terracotta it feels like terracotta but it's ceramic it's just that color and then we got this is that upside down it's just it's a bird on a the branch. How do they get these on there? That is amazing. And this one. Pepper, my dog, is sleeping right outside my door and she's having a doggy dream. And I can hear her do that like dream barking thing. It's the most adorable thing ever. Right now we're just having a real calm, quiet moment 
looking at bird buttons. So if you've got some place to be, or if you feel like you're falling asleep, then mission accomplished. <laughs> Let's just make this real relaxing. How cute are these buttons? You don't have to go anywhere, just relax. All you gotta do right now is sit here and watch me present little bird buttons to you. It's all that you gotta do right now. Last one. That's it. They're gorgeous, you guys. I love them. And I picture them on a really nice, like, black or even like, um, like an, kind of like an acorn colored cardigan. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I just think that they're absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to put them, I don't want to put them in the bag. I think I'm just going to set them right back on the cottony filling inside this box for now with the little business card. And I'm going to save them someplace special. And I need to label this box so I know what it is. I mean, I, I guess I could always just open it, but love those. And I wanted to share that with you because I know that I did talk a lot about it and I was gushing over them and it was quite a splurge. I feel like, um, I mean, you don't always spend that kind of money on ceramic buttons and have them shipped to you from the UK, but I wanted something extra special for the first cardigan that I knit. So I was, I'm excited about those. They're absolutely lovely. So definitely check them out. Stockwell Ceramics. I will link to them down below. They don't just have buttons. They have lots of other things as well. I know you'll fall in love with them, but okay. The last project is what I've done in this craft space here. Now, what you see um, for you know all of these episodes is most of my craft office space. Um, but over on that part, of the room, I don't really show that very often. And that's because it was just, it's just a closet and nothing special. But I did something, I organized and um, I got creative with the space here. And I turned what was a regular closet with sliding doors into a very functional kind of workspace, craft space and storage situation. And I really wanna share that with you. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm just gonna put the calendar, or the, I'm just gonna, <laughs> The calendar. I'm going to put my camera on on my phone, make sure that my lens is clean, and I'm going to take you on a really quick vlog style tour of that little space of my craft room so I can show you what I did. Before I do that, I want to pop up um, a picture really quick of what that side of this office craft space looked like. So I'll pop it up here. You can see this is the closet um, and it's just, I have my picture here. I want to make sure that it has in it. Yeah. Okay. So you see right there, my closet, there's Gladys right off to the side, the closet door is open. And then inside is just a disorganized closet with very little in terms of like storage solution. Like I, whenever I would open that closet, first of all, half of that closet was really hard to access because of where Gladys is standing and there's a basket over there and whatever. And then the other half, it was just hard to get in and out of anything. It was unorganized. And so I decided I had had enough. I needed to do something about that. And so I went to town yesterday. Um, my friend Jessica, who lives a couple doors down, she came over and we worked together and sorted things out, got rid of a lot of stuff. I'm donating a bunch of stuff to my kids' um, preschool that, you know, like storage units, things like that, that I'm not going to use. And I'm so excited to share with you what I have going over there. So let's go ahead and just check out that side of my office. So come with me. Okay, so we're gonna go from over here. You can see me over there on that screen. Hello. And we are going to turn outside my outdoor backyard area. Now I have, um, this is what you typically see. There's my sofa, my little gallery wall, my spinning wheel, my ottoman. And then over here, I turned that closet into a completely functional workspace, you guys. Like, hello, look, what is this? What is this guy doing? You need to be here. There we go, okay. So, and that's my, that's my yarn stash over there. But you guys, look what I have here. A completely functional space. It's wonderful. So now I do some, I dabble in watercolor and gouache painting, some acrylic painting from time to time. Um, and so I like to have places where I can organize all of that stuff. And you guys, I went crazy with a labeler. Look at it, it's all labeled, everything. Like even when I have like stuff for my boys, 
different paints. All of these drawers are labeled with exactly what's in there. I've got some baskets over here of varying different things, but everything is very organized. Down here, I have some photo backdrops that I use. The Knit Fabette poster, you can find that in the Wool Needles Hands merch shop. All sorts of things that are labeled, you guys. How cool. Okay, so this thing that I have here, this and this, this cubic thing right here and this cubic thing here and then the top, the tabletop, I got all of that at Michael's. They, you buy them separately, but they get screwed together and they go together to create this really nice like work surface. Um, these two things I picked up at Home Goods. If you're in the US, Home Goods is a really awesome kind of like, kind of like a discount retailer. Um, but yeah, and then I organized up here with little bins that have you know, very specific things in each of those bins to keep it nice and organized. And then over here, I put up some little pieces of art that I've done just to kind of keep it inspiring in here. And I'm so excited about this space because now my entire office and craft area just has so much more like workable space, so much more usable space and not even just that space. I can walk over there now, it's more comfortable. Yeah, like this is, this is where the magic, magic happens. <laughs> and then over here, this is like where I work, my computer, all of that, other cubby storage spaces over here, my TV for when I come in here to escape. So yeah, this is Wool Needles Hands and Fiber for the People headquarters. And I love it, you guys. And I am so excited and I wanted to share that with you because when I come in here now, I just feel so much more inspired by having that a little additional space. And I didn't have to do really all that much. I just, I'm, I think just having this here really helped a ton. I already had this storage unit here, so that just got moved over here. Now this area over here is where I keep extra lights, um, lighting for the podcast that I've used in the past, uh, rolled up photo backdrops. It's obviously not ideally stored, but it's a heck of a lot better than it was before. Yeah. So I'm loving it. Just thought I would share that with you guys, take you on a quick little tour. And you know what, we'll do something fun. Right outside here. Oh, she's not there. Usually Pepper's right, oh, there she is. Hi, Pepper girl. Hi, Pepper girl. Come here. You wanna come? Are you sleepy? Oh, the boy's awake. Okay, we'll see you later, Pepper. Goodbye. Let's go back to the main camera. Here we go. We're heading back into the camera. Are we ready? A little office tour for you. I'm so excited, you guys. I can't even tell you. I love being organized. I love labeling things. I'm not OCD in terms of like, um, I'm not like obsessive about it, but it helps to keep me calm when I know where things are and think everything's kind of in its place. It just, it feels, um, I feel more inspired. It keeps me kind of from feeling overwhelmed. So organization, and sometimes too, I feel like we organize things when we feel overwhelmed because it's something we can control and it gives us back that feeling of control. And I know that does tap into kind of like a type A part of my personality, um, but it's so nice to have that feeling of organization. And I look over there, there now and I'm just very creatively inspired, professionally inspired and all of that. So I really wanted to share that with you. So thank you for sticking around to watch that with me, to let me share a little inside with you guys. That is it for me today. I am going to go and check on my little boy who is getting over a cold. He has his last day of school tomorrow and I would hate to have him miss it because he's sick. And so I'm really keeping my fingers crossed that whatever he's got gets better today, but there's a really good chance it won't. And he might miss his last day of school tomorrow. So I don't know. It just kind of breaks my heart a little bit, but it was so nice to share all of this with you guys today. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me. I love having these chances to visit with you and catch up in a really casual laid back sort of way. If you took value from this video or enjoyed yourself at any point, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, definitely subscribe and click that bell icon so you can be notified anytime I upload new content here on the channel, which is every Wednesday and every Sunday. Until we meet again for Wednesday's midweek ramble, happy knitting, happy making, happy whatever it is that you're doing. Take care, be well, and I will see you soon. Bye.
Tyler, can I shred up your old t-shirts at mom and dad's house for t-shirt yarn? Send. <laughs> 